morning is from the book of James. Uh oh. James. You know, years ago, Charlotte, my first wife, said a woman asked him if she would teach her have a Bible study, just a one-on-one. -on -one. And she said, yes, I'd be glad to do that. She said, what, uh, what book would you like to study? She said, anything but James. <laughs> so Charlotte said, hmm. So she taught her James. <laughs> yeah. James is sometimes tough with us. But he's not talking about the tongue today. He's talking about something else. So turn with me to James 4. James 4. You'll find it, I think it's on page 680 in most of the Bible. James 4, verses 1 to 10. I'll read it in English, and then uh, Koabe-san will read in uh, Nihongo. What do, where do wars and fights come from among you? Hmm. Do they not come from your desires for pleasures that war in your members? You lust and you do not have. You murder and covet and cannot obtain. You fight in war, yet you do not have because you do not ask. You ask and you don't receive because you ask amiss that you may spend it on your own pleasures. Adulterers and adulteresses. Now wait a minute, he's talking to the church. Adulterers and adulteresses. Do you not know what that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Or do you think that the scripture says in vain, the spirit who dwells in, in us yearns jealously, but he gives more grace. Therefore, he says, resist the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Therefore submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he'll draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Lament and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he will lift you up. ジェームス。
定の輩を持ち、世を友とするのは神への敵対であることを知らないか、おおよそ世の友とな,るなろうと思う者は、自らを神の敵とするのである。それとも、神は私たちのうちにすまわせた霊を、妬むほどに愛しておられる。と聖書に書いてあるのは虚しい言葉だと思うのかしかし神は冷やましに恵みを賜るであるから神は浮かぶるものを退け減り下るものに恵みを賜るとあるそういうわけだから神に従いなさいそして悪魔に立ち向かいなさいそうすれば彼はあなた方彼はあなた方から逃げ去るであろう。神に近づきなさい。そうすれば、神はあなた方に近づいてくださるであろう。罪人どもよ、手を清めよ。二心の者どもよ、心を清くせよ。苦しめ、悲しめ、泣け。あなた方の笑いを悲しみに、喜びを憂いに変えよ。主の御前に減り下れそうすれば主はあなた方を高くしてくださるであろう。So far we read. Ken Sensei joins me. Father in heaven, may the words of my mouth and Ken Sensei's mouth, the meditations and the thoughts of all of our hearts, be acceptable to you as this time as we read, study your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Did you ever notice that sometimes the Christian life is a little bit of a struggle? Hmm. No reaction, Ken. <laughs> I guess they don't have any struggle. Huh? How many of you have never had a struggle in life, Christian life? Put your hand up. Never a struggle. Oh, I see. Okay. Well, then you better listen. <laughs> But why is it the struggle? Why are there so many unhappy Christians and so many divided churches? Well, James already gave us the answer in the first verse of chapter 4. He said that we struggle within ourselves because we try to live in two worlds. This old materialistic world and in his world, the kingdom of God. And that's why we have a struggle. God says we have to choose. And you know, while it may be a one time decision to follow him, it's a daily choice to live for him. And to show how strongly God feels about this, James says in verse 4. That if we are friends with the world, we are enemies with God. Now, I don't want to be an enemy of God. I want to live for Him. And yet, I believe that anyone who takes His or her faith seriously struggles with the choice living for God or living for self. 
自分の信仰を真剣に考えているのなら必ず2つのチョイスこの選択つまり神様のために生きるかそれとも自分のために生きるかの間にあって悩むものなのです Let me repeat that. 繰り返しています Anyone who takes his or her faith seriously struggles with this choice, living for God or living for self. The problem is real and it's tough. Now, as hard as that struggle is, and as much as we fail, and as high and unattainable God's standards seem to be, there's only one way that we can gain victory in this struggle. この葛藤がいかに強く何回失敗を繰り返しても神様の基準は常に高く人間にはその基準に達するのが到底困難なものと見えていてもそれに打ち勝つ道はただ一つしかありません And verse tells us how. それは6節にあります It's through God's grace. それはただ神様の恵みを通して可能なのです Because His grace is even greater than the difficult demands That are placed upon us. His grace is stronger and better than all the demands that are placed upon us. So there it is. In order to gain victory in this struggle, we need His grace. Now the good news. The good news is, is that this grace is available. But understand this too. God will not force it upon us. But James does tell us this morning how we are able to receive this generous and victorious grace. He issues a series of ten commands submit. Resist, come near, wash, purify, grieve, mourn, weep, change, and humble. Now, in the original language, These commands call for an immediate response. An immediate response, you see, is needed because if you let things just go on, just be, you'll slowly drift away to the way of the world and away from God. And if you do that, you'll probably continue on that direction. So you need to take immediate and decisive action. Now, there are different ways of looking at these Ten Commands, but in the end, they all point to one thing, and that is that we're to be humble. <laughs> Notice, James isn't telling us how to overcome our problem and overcome the sin that remains in us. 
He isn't telling us that because we cannot do it. Only God can do that through His grace. But what James does teach us is how to receive that grace, how to open the door for God to do His work in our life. Now to receive this grace, we must get rid of all our pride and be humble before the Lord. Oh, that's easy. No, it's hard. Too hard for us to do. And so James gives us three steps we can take to become humble. Now, the first is to resist the devil. Why? Well, because he's the source of all pride, and so he prevents us from being humble. Remember this about Satan. It was pride that caused him to rebel against God, and which led to his downfall. And remember, it was pride he used to tempt Eve when he said to Eve, Oh, Eve, you're going to be like God. And it's pride that makes you say, I don't need God. I can do it myself. See, temptations often, maybe always, have to do with pride. <laughs> it's the devil that tells us we don't need any help. Have you ever, let me ask you this, have you ever tried to help somebody who didn't want your help? It's almost impossible. Some of the times as parents we see our teenage children getting into a bad situation that will harm them. So what do we do? We try helping them. But they reject our help. Their pride keeps them from admitting they're wrong and they need our help. Often only when the damage has already been done will their eyes be open and they'll actually seek our help. So that's how it is sometimes with our children. But wait a minute. That's also how it is with us. God's help and advice. God's help and His advice are right there, but we have to admit that we need it. Do you disagree with that? 
aren't we in that situation sometimes where we know God's word says his help and advice are there waiting for us but we say we don't need it I'll do it myself so then how do we resist the devil? Two ways. Wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. That is, make your conduct, your thoughts, and your motives, motives too, pure. You see, the desire for pleasure leads to impure deeds and motives. So when you're tempted, resist the devil. Don't play around with sin because that road leads to one thing, destruction. But you know, if you really resist, Satan will see his efforts are wasted and he'll flee from you. Furthermore, think of this. When we start resisting some particular sin in our life, after a while the temptation won't be as great and our desires will be on those things which are more of God. So the first step is resisting the devil. The second step is to resist, to submit to God, or as we find it in verse 8, draw near to God. Now listen to me now. Submit doesn't mean to obey God. <laughs> but rather to submit our will to God's will. See the difference? If an authority, can sign if an authority tells me to stop doing something, I have to stop. But in my heart, everything's still the same. I'll do it when he isn't looking. Same with God. Just obeying God because he is God, well, that's important. But it doesn't fix the problem. We have to submit our will to God. Think about that. However, when you submit your will to God, this will lead you to obeying because you want to obey. Not because you have to. I really believe this is an important step to take in our Christian life. Because God will not force himself upon us. We have to submit first. 
He wants us to come to him because we want to, not because we're forced to. He wants us to desire him like uh, like like the deer pants for the water. So like the prodigal son, he lets us go our own way. But then when we turn around and return, we find he's waiting for us. Do you remember that story? Listen to Luke 15:20. So he, the prodigal, got up and went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him. <laughs> And was filled with compassion for him. And he ran to his son, threw his arms around him, and kissed him. Notice, as the prodigal son drew near, drew near to his father, his father ran out to welcome him back home. Jesus doesn't break down the door to our hearts. Instead, he says in Revelation 3.20, Here I am. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with him and he with me. Sometime if you're in London, go over to Westminster Abbey. And as you go in the church, on the right hand side, look carefully or you'll miss it. It's the original portrait showing this story. There's a picture of a door. And you can see on both sides of the door. On the side with the center, there's a latch, a doorknob. On the other side stands Jesus. And there's no doorknob. Jesus knocks. But we have to open the door. Of course, to do this, we have to deny ourselves. Jesus told his disciples in Matthew 16, If anyone will come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. You have to say to Jesus, Jesus, I need you. I cannot live on my own. I'm lost without you. And if we do, Listen to what Jesus promised in John 15. Jesus said, Remain in me, and I'll remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. 
neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Yes, I'm going to do nothing. 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 I'm going to When we are near to God, He will purify us and He'll make us clean. First, resist the devil. Second, draw near to God. And the third thing is to actually humble ourselves. In verse 10, Jesus said, Humble yourselves before the Lord, and He will lift you up. How do we humble ourselves? Verse 9. Lament, mourn, and weep. Change your laughter to mourning and your joy to gloom. Oh, joy is wonderful. But sometimes, see, lament means grieve. Weep, the original language, the Greek says, crying out loud. These aren't just words. They're actions. Now this word this verse has to be used in context. Some people use this verse and other verses like it to suggest that the Christian life should be a life of mourning and gloom, as if it's a sin to be joyful. Nonsense. God wants us to rejoice, but it's wrong to have only a shallow, temporary joy that's based on our pleasures or on ourselves. You see what James is really talking about here? He's talking about repentance. Because if we really repent of our sin, we will, it will cause us to mourn, grieve, and weep. We're to be truly sorry for our sin. Yes, you may have times of deep grief over your sin. But, as you do, you come humbly before God and you'll experience His grace. And when you experience His grace, you'll experience real joy. Now, joy or pride in what you've done or how good you are, not joy or pride in what you've done or how good you are, but the joy of knowing that God loves you and He extends His grace to you. Now, many times, Many times we deserve to fail at what we do, but He still uses us. 
大きな場合私たちは失敗することもあるでしょうしかしそれにもかかわらず神様は私たちをお持ちになるのです What greater joy can there be than to exalt in the Lord? He never fails and he's so very good. And I believe that God knows that if we needed, if, if we needed to rejoice in our own strength or to be proud, we would never. Come to him. そして神様はよくご存知です。私たちが自分自身の力を誇る、あるいは傲慢になる必要がある間は、私たちは決して神様のもとに近づかないことをよくご存知なのです。Only when we see how awful our sinful condition is and how awful we are, do we come to him. 私たちが自分の罪の恐ろしさ、自分の実態がどんなに恐ろしいものであるかを知ったとき。And then, and only then, does he exalt us. Yes, humble yourself before the Lord and he will lift you up. And then, you'll rejoice. Jesus said this in Matthew 23. For whoever exalts himself will be humbled, and whoever humbles himself will be exalted. We see this in the example of Jesus, who being found in the appearance of a man, He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even to the death of the cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. My dear ones this morning, The question is, are you experiencing the grace of God? Are you experiencing the grace of God? Is His grace showering down upon you, giving you victory over sin? Remember, resist the devil, submit to God, and humble yourself by mourning over your sin. May God be merciful unto you, make His grace to shine upon you. Amen. Amen. Let's sing a little a song here, number 657. Number 657. Stay seated, please. Search me, O God, and know my heart today. Try me, O Savior, know my thoughts, I pray. See if 
Search me, God. Know my heart today. Try me. Know my thoughts. See if there's something in me, Lord, some wicked thing in me. Let me see it. Cleanse me from it. Set me free from its power. Second verse. I praise thee, Lord. For cleansing me from sin, fulfill thy word and make me pure within. Fill me with fire, with love and shame. Father God, yes, our prayer is that you would just show us, help us, Lord. Oh, I know that you won't cleanse us until we ask. So, Lord, show us that wicked way, that thought, that pride. Show us what it is in our lives that's denying us the grace that we need to live a victorious life. That we may confess it and be cleansed. My prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs>